Divine True Spirit Discussions. These are discussions with people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. Jesus speaks to Alberto, a fourth sphere spirit through an intermediary and to Kloboka. This discussion was held on the 6th of May 2014 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Okay, welcome again to the Spirit Discussions videos that we've been doing lately. We'd like to welcome you and welcome Anto as well, who's going Thank to be you. channeling again for us today. And uh, hopefully we'll see who we speak with, but I think it's a man named Alberto who wants yes. to come and talk with us today. Hopefully you've been enjoying the Spirit Discussions as we've been placing them on the internet, and we hope to have more of them over the coming months to place for you. But currently we're doing them once every fortnight or once every three or four weeks um, just to keep get started. Mm. So thanks, Fanto, <laughs> for doing that with us today. Mm, thank you. So let's get started with the, our discussion with Alberto. Okay. Senor, hello. Hello. I'd love to shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you to do that, you'll have to overcloak Anto, and I don't think he'll let you do that at this no, stage. No, not this point. <laughs> mm. yeah. I'm just very excited to be here, to talk to you. Yeah, thanks, Alberto. Mm. It's always lovely to have a chat with people we can't see. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting privilege for me as well. Mm. I can't say that I've actually done this before. Oh, OK. Mm. So how long have you been in the spirit world? Uh, quite a while. Yeah. Um, at least uh, 200 odd years. Yes. Mm. Yep. Yeah. I was. I lived in the. In quite a unique period for us. Yes. It was um, around the 1780s. You know, when Spanish, the Spain was occupying our area. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And when you say our area, what was your in Mexico? Area? Mexico. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So there was a lot of. It was very interesting for me. Mm -hmm. mm, I had a lot of opportunities to do travel and. And I learned in a, the Spanish language and mm -hmm. I could pursue things. Mm. Mm. So mm. I pursued things. I, it inspired me to learn, I guess. It gave me the opportunity to extend my experience out of the country. Right. So you finished up interacting with the world a bit more than you yes. did before then. Yeah. And mm. I ignited this passion to just keep looking and searching mm -hmm. for more things. Mm. Mm. And I had the opportunity to go back home and then teach people. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So, in what area of Mexico did you live? In San Francisco, as they. Yeah. Mm. It was called, I think there were, it was different names for it at the time. At the time, yeah. Mm. Yep. And obviously things have changed a lot over the last 200 years. Considerably. Mm. <laughs> yes. Mm. I do keep an eye on what occurs. <laughs> so, you occasionally visit Earth still? I still visit Earth. Yeah. Mm. I don't spend as much time as I would like here. I've been quite busy in my endeavours. Yes. What mm. have you been doing mostly in the spirit world? Oh, the spirit world. <laughs> as yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's, oh, it's a platform for just to digest and learn. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. It's amazing how large the universe God created is, isn't it? That I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I do agree. It is a very large universe. Mm. Mm. Who created it? That's something I have not determined for myself as yet. So you've been examining the universe itself, but not spending much time connecting to the potential of who might have created it? No. Yeah. Do you feel somebody created it at this stage, or do you feel that it sort of exists on its own? Well, it's strange you ask, because mm -hmm. there was a fleeting moment where a concept did pop into my thought, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden I had this beautiful woman appear before me. Oh, okay. What was the concept that popped into your thoughts before the beautiful woman came? Exactly the very question you asked me. Oh, okay. What created all this? Right. And then the beautiful woman who came, who, who was she? Well, hmm, she's exotic. <laughs> <laughs> it quite surprised me. Yeah. Hmm. She, she's very scholarly. Yes. Um, so she's very knowledgeable. Extremely knowledgeable. Has an answer for everything. Mm-hmm doesn't deliver it in the way that I'm used to yes. from others. Yes, in the sense that you're used to talking or engaging through speech mostly. Correct, whereas I feel feelings coming from this woman. Mm -hmm. And and they're new for you. Yeah, it's, oh, it's extremely new. Yeah. 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 And how long has this woman been in the spirit world? Have you asked her? No, I've, 
she invited me to come to speak to you. Yes. And she, she said that you would have all these answers. Right. And you'd be able to assist me, make it more comfortable in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, yeah, here's another journey <laughs> to her, so why not? So you're used to experimenting now, so hmm. not much danger in coming and speaking with someone on Earth. No. <laughs> You know, we, I spoke with all my other colleagues and, yes. and they've been hearing vermerate, you know, vibrations around the place mm -hmm. and there's a lot of talk of there's new information coming about mm -hmm. and I wanted to find out where the source of this information was coming from mm -hmm. and um, yeah, so yeah, a multitude of things occurred all at, simultaneously. Mm -hmm. hmm. So where was the source of the information? <laughs> well. I'm, apparently I'm talking to you about the source, <laughs> but there's something quite strange and I don't understand. Mm -hmm. They said that you are also talking in the spirit world. Correct. And it intrigues me. How is it possible that a person could be in multiple locations at once? There are many, many things. Yes. Yeah. You know, do, do you, you've had a recollection of your sleep state when you were on earth? Yes, I had. So you had a recollection of your body that you had on Earth, and then when you went to sleep every night, you had some experiences in the in the sleep state while you're on Earth. Yes. So in that process, you learnt that we have a physical body and we also have a spiritual body. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And now you've engaged your spiritual body fully. So yes. Now, now you have a spiritual body, and you don't have a physical body anymore. That passed many years ago, obviously. What was it, in the early 1800s, was it? Early 1800s, mm -hmm. yes. So um, you know that the concept on Earth about who we are is very, very different to the concept on Earth or, or that you now have about who you are. Yes, and that, that's, it's fascinating. And I, mm -hmm. I'm so excited, ecstatic, the mm -hmm. fact that I continue. <laughs> life continues. Life continues, yeah. What did you feel on earth? Did you feel that life continued before you passed? No, I had a fear. Of death. Of, of death and that would be the end of it and I don't have enough time to, yep. to learn and mm -hmm. you know, to experience life. Mm -hmm. And then how long was it after you passed that you realised that you, you had passed? Did you realise it instantly? Probably, not, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, hmm, very interesting question. Mm. Possibly Maybe odd, 20 years odd. Yeah. I didn't realise it was that long, but yeah. That... So during that time you were earthbound, you, you spent a lot of time on earth. Yes. Yes. And then after a while you realised that something was wrong, obviously. <laughs> yeah, something was not right. People yeah. not engaging with me. You would talk to people and they wouldn't talk back. And... I'm trying to teach the students and they're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> it is funny. <laughs> <laughs> and after a while you learnt that obviously something had changed. Mm, I would question it. Mm. You know, it's not normal. Things. And do you remember the event of your death? I died of natural causes. Right. Mm. Yeah. Um, so. It was in. I wasn't a very old man. Mm -hmm. But, but I, enjoy, a... I, enjoy, I enjoyed a drink or two. And I, right. <laughs> as you could feel. Yeah. But, yeah. My liver gave out on me. So. Right. And that sort of come up on you quite fast. Yes. And so it was a bit of a shock that you passed in that regard. Yes, yeah. and I was, I was quite anxious during that whole period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. 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 And so, you know, after the 20 years and you started to realise that you had passed, you started to ask other people questions about yes. where you were now and all those kind of things? I instantly moved. Mm. I journeyed through mm -hmm. and I had someone with me. Yeah. And um, oh, it's just the experiences there. They're, and they, hard, they're hard to explain. It's, mm -hmm. And they introduced you to the location in which you lived at the time? Yes. And do you now see that as a location that you're matched to the condition of your soul in love? When, when I moved into the, originally into the spirit, into spirit world, world yes. it matched exactly where I was. Yes. And yep. that was another hard experience, yep. you know, lesson to learn. Yeah. And it took, took some time as well. Yeah. But having said that, I enjoyed the experience. Yes, because now you had a reflection of what was going on. And I realised everything is something that you need to ignite within yourself to learn. Correct. And, Correct. and that excited me. Yes, yeah. 
So you've, so you've learned quite a lot of things in the last couple of hundred years about your life, obviously, in the spirit world. Yes, yes. And where are you now in the spirit world? They say we're in the early stages of the fourth sphere. Yes. So, so just past beyond the third sphere. Yes. And you're just in the early stages of the fourth. And you've had a number of graduations, shall we call it? And this was a big celebration. <laughs> oh, of course, yes. For myself. Yeah. It's, it's such a tremendous thing. Yeah. I cherish it with, with all my heart. Yeah. And every graduation is like a lift in a condition of joy, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And the experiences you have, the people you meet. Yeah. All new. Everything's new and, oh, yeah. there's just, it's, it's like a new book. <laughs> what do we, where do I start? Yeah. 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 So it's quite incredible experiences, isn't it, that you've it's, had so far? It's extremely incredible. Yeah. And you don't have to panic about how much time you've got left. Panic? <laughs> No, there's no, there's no consideration of panic. No. <laughs> it's, it's just, oh, well, where do I start? Yeah, no, that's mm. wonderful. Mm. So now that, now that you, the, you had this feeling, where did all this come from? So if we can trace things down to that feeling. Well, I met some very interesting people. Yes. In the fourth sphere. Yeah. And indeed, more so in the third. Yes. A lot of them did not want to graduate with, with us. Ah, okay, to the fourth. To the fourth. They wanted to stay in the th third for a longer period of time. And I could not understand why. Mm -hmm. They were seeking to learn in a different way. Mm -hmm. And I started to think, what is it that they know that I'm not <laughs> drawn to? What do they know that I don't know? Yeah, yeah. because I, I feel like I know a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the time you get to the fourth sphere, you've had 200 years of life, you... No, I've a fair bit of stuff. I've explored. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but um, I don't know. There is this, how would you call it? There, there is a hollowness. A feeling in you. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that something is not quite as you perceive it to be. And I, I can honestly say I haven't lived my life through feelings. Mm -hmm. But these people are talking about living and expressing yourself yep. through this mechanism. Yes. And there is this, there's something that comes from them that ignites, that ignites this interest. This feeling in you that something's missing and that you've got to find out what it is. Yes. Mm. And that seems to be driving me at the moment. Mm -hmm. mm. It doesn't, not just myself, mm -hmm. I actually feel my compadre is here. Mm -hmm. They have a lot more interest in this than I do. Mm -hmm. It's just I was a little bit more forceful to come to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, also you have a fair bit of desire, don't you? So that's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be left behind. I want to... Well, it's pretty hard to get left behind in a world of infinite progression. Yes, but <laughs> when you can learn so quickly... Of course. And I'm finding I'm not learning as quickly on this matter. Yes, yes. So can I, a question. can I help you with a few of these issues that you've raised? Oh, certainly. Yep. I mean, I haven't even had the opportunity to ask anything about yourself. That's okay. No, I'm okay. And I feel quite There's plenty of people you can ask <laughs> about me in the spirit world. I'm sure they'll tell you. <laughs> um, I would like to probably discuss with you firstly, um, I'm happy, by the way, to answer any questions about myself that you may have. But one of the first questions you asked, which was an important question really for your own understanding, and that is, how can it be that on one hand I'm here on earth and then on another hand I'm also teaching in the spirit world and sometimes those things are happening concurrently? Yes. Whereas what you've observed is that if a person is not on earth but in the spirit world in their sleep state, they have to be in the spirit world in their sleep state in order to teach and then once their body on earth wakes up, they have to come back to earth. And how is it, could you add further to that? Mm -hmm. How is it possible you can actually be on earth? Like, I cannot be here. Correct. And you know that I've lived here before. Yes. Yes. This beautiful lady has shown me these things. Yes. So she showed you the life I had before. Well, I wanted to, I inquired about who you are. Mm -hmm. And it just intrigues me. You're an individual on earth and yet you're also talking in the spirit world. Correct. <clears throat> so, mm. so, sorry for interrupting. Mm. That's okay. Uh, notice, no, at the moment, you know that you're, you have a spirit body 
and that you had a physical body before you passed. And I no longer have that. And you no longer have your physical body. Correct. But at this stage, you're not aware that actually your spirit body is just a body as well. It's not actually the real you. How is that possible? Well, the real you is your soul, which is another part of you that you've not yet properly met. So you know how when you were on Earth and you looked in the mirror, yes, you could see your physical body. Correct. But you couldn't see your spirit body. No, I could not. And that's why when you were worried about dying, because you, th you thought that perhaps once the physical body has gone, that maybe there's no other body and then you'd be dead. Mm -hmm. right? But once you passed and you come to terms with your passing, which took around 20 years for you to come to terms with your passing, you then realise that actually you've, you've still got a body, but it's not the same body that you had when you are on Earth, but rather a spirit body, a, a body that's of a, made of a different material. It's still material. You can still touch it, can't you? Yes, so You can see it, touch it. Other people can hug you and everything. So it's still a, of material, but it's just not the same material as your physical body. Well, at one stage, it's a nicer body. Yes, of course. Well, you've progressed to the fourth sphere, so naturally it's going to be a nicer body than what you had when you are on Earth. And in, when you are on Earth, as you know, you arrived in the spirit world in the first sphere, and so, mm. so your body was obviously, even your spirit body when you first arrived in the spirit world wasn't as good as it is now, right? Yes, it's something I could change. Yes, it's something you can change. Mm. But what you don't realise at this point is that what's changing it is the changes that are happening to your soul. Okay. So your soul is now the real you, and your spirit body is just an appendage of your soul. It's, a, it's, a, it's what your soul uses to express itself in the spirit world. I've not come across this soul. Mm -hmm. You have come across it in the sense that you have learnt to access parts of your soul at this point, but not all of your soul. So you're not aware of what its potentials and capacities are. But you have actually accessed some of it because at the moment you have a strong exercise of desire. Yes, right? I do. This is something that's been fairly consistent inside of you since the time you were on Earth. And that is a soul-based function. That is, you could call it, that is an, an operation of the soul. And it's this desire that drives your thinking. So... This is very novel. Mm. How the desire I feel... The desire you feel... I express now in, as myself. Yes, is a part of your soul. The memories you have of all of your experiences are all a part of your soul. You know how some spirits have referred to them as Akashic records and those kind of things? You know how you go up to a person and you can feel what's happened to them in their past? Yeah, I've looked for those Akashic records. Yeah. Well, that, that is a record that's in their soul. It's invisible to your spirit body's eyes, but you can feel it from the other person. You can feel when they're telling the truth and you can feel when they're lying about their experience mm. as a result, can't you? From yes. them. Yes, you can. Yeah. You can see it too. Yeah, so when somebody... So, and, and when you say you can see it, there's different colours that come out of them when they're lying in comparison to when they're telling the truth. In this dimensional space, yes. Yes. So you can actually see that they're misrepresenting the truth. Yes. And where do these colours come from? At the moment, they look to you to be coming from your spirit body, don't they? They're, well, that's all I can deduce at this point. But they're actually coming from the soul. Hmm. Right? And there is a whole heap of things that are a part of your soul. Desire, passion, longing... And all of your uh, memory of all of your experience, they are all, all of these things are stored in your soul. And your physical body, which you now have, which with this, let's term your spirit body, as the physical body, the material body that you're currently using to express yourself, that is just an expression of the soul. It is actually a creation. The soul keeps it going. The soul changes it. So as you grow in love in your soul, your physical body, which is spirit, changes. Mm -hmm. And it reflects the conditional changes in your soul. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. Now, you've learnt up to this point that if you change in your condition of love, 
that actually something changes inside of your body. Like you can see that your body improves in its condition. So you remember in your first fear body how you had lots of cracks and holes and injuries like that, that looked fairly bad. Yes, yes. And then as you grew in love, they all patched up, didn't they? They all recovered and repaired. And that was, an, that was a monumental discovery. Yeah, yeah. Just to realise the dissociation. There, there was a link between what was going on inside of you feeling-wise mm. and the way in which you were expressing love and, and how your body looked. Yes. Mm. Now, your body looks the way it looks because of the soul. So all of the energy to maintain your spirit body comes from your soul. Hmm. And you are only one half of a soul, actually. How is that possible? Well, the way God created the soul was a, is, has a dual nature in that it, it's created together as one whole soul, but when it incarnates onto the earth in the first incarnation, which you had a couple of hundred years ago, it splits into two bodies. One body has a spirit and a material body attached. One, so one half of the soul has a spirit body and a material body attached to it. So okay, that, so it's the one soul that governs. So one soul split it, splits into two, mm -hmm. and you are one half of that one whole. But I still have a you expression have a body? as a full person. Correct, you have a full person, but it's not the full expression of your soul because your soul actually has another half to it. Hmm. that you have yet to meet, or perhaps you have met. Almost like a cell splitting. It is like a cell splitting, but only once. It only happens once. It doesn't continue to split. Okay. Does that make sense? So what is the purpose of having a half a soul? Well, this is so that at some point in the future you would meet up with the other half of your soul. Hmm. Why would who will also have a body. And a phys physical body and a spirit body, and, and in your case, they will only have a s spiritual body because they would have died at a similar time that you died. So, if I draw an analogy, if I die in the spirit body, do I merge into my soul with this other half? Well, we need to even ask the question: Do we need to die in our spirit body to merge our soul? Because our soul is really, in a lot of ways, independent of our bodies. You see, your soul exists whether your bodies exist or not. So, so it makes sense that you can merge with the other half of your soul while you retain your bodies. Oh. Does that make sense? I'm glad. I don't want to lose this body. <laughs> <laughs> well, after a while, you won't be so attached to the body you have because you'll realise that you'll be able to create many bodies if you wished to. So this soul that you speak of, or mm -hmm. half a soul, half a soul, which you are, is that also an expression of this form, another form as a person? Um, yes, the two bodies though, the physical body and the spirit body, as you know, are created through the process of conception on earth. Yes. But the soul isn't created through the process of conception. The soul is created by somebody or something else. And I won't say that it's God at this point because you haven't re resolved that question. We, we, that's part of what I wanted to discuss with you. But somebody or something else created the soul. And have you ever observed the incarnation of a soul into... into yes, I've what? studied many things. Yep. And that's why I understand there is no... That's why you're unique. Mm -hmm. Because you actually are on earth mm -hmm. as well as the spirit world. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people... Are only on earth. Are only on earth. Correct. Despite what they say. Despite what they think. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so there's a lot of people who think they're in both places, but no, they're not. Yeah. Yes. They or just they, need a mirror. Yeah, they have a sleep state, obviously, when they obviously when their physical body goes to sleep on earth, then they can spend some time in the spirit world. But if their physical body is awake on earth, then they can't spend any time in the spirit world. And I do spend time with people like that. Yes, of course. As we all do. Mm. Yeah. But the real issue then becomes, well, how... So, so we've introduced this concept to you of, soul, of soul mates, if you like, the other half of your soul. Okay. And have you heard of that concept before, soul yes, mate? Yes, that has... That's one of those terms. That's one of those terms that you've not... You've heard before, but not fully investigated. I don't know why I wasn't attracted to the term. Mm. But it's... It has been used by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And they don't understand what it means either. No, that's right. So but, how can you... 
follow someone who doesn't know what they're teaching. I agree. You know, it's pointless to follow someone who doesn't know what they're teaching. Mm. You want to follow someone who does, no? And, <laughs> and I, had the personal experience. As you're aware, you can investigate many things quite rapidly. Of course. And so you can see when they don't know anything they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I've reached the conclusion of that quite instantly. Yes, yeah. But there are some people I can introduce you to who are with their actual other halves of their soul and you will be able to ask them questions about that. And they will be in their spirit body. They'll be in their spirit body, not on earth. They'll be in their spirit body. But how do I know that they will be a soul union? Well, this is where you need to experiment a little and see what they're like. What you want to do is examine one half hmm. and the person who's claiming to be the other half and see what you see. Allow yourself to go through the experiments of what do you observe, right? I would like to do that. Yeah. And for, me, for many of people, there are people who claim to be soulmates who are not, as you know. Mm -hmm. And then there are some that are quite unique in that they claim to be soulmates and there is something quite different about them, right? And that's what I'd like you to observe. So, so that's, a, that's, a, that's an area of investigation you can follow. To what extent can I investigate this? Well, <clears throat> there's probably two or three ways you can investigate this. Firstly, you can investigate it through your own experience by observation. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you can ask people to come to you who, you who, who they believe are soulmates and you can examine them and see what's going on between those particular couples. Does that make sense? So yes. that's one way of doing it. Yes. Another way of doing it is to get a spirit who, a couple who are soulmates who come from the celestial heavens. Have you heard of that location in the spirit world? Yes, I have not seen them there. Yeah, no, you wouldn't be able to see them yet because of your current condition. To get into the celestial heavens, you have to enter a relationship with God. And that's something that I'd like to discuss with you uh, as a part of this discussion. But you could ask some, one of those to come who have met their soulmates and you could ask them to see and ask them to see, you know, look, ask them questions about their condition. Mm -hmm. The third thing you could do is you could meet your own soulmate and see what it feels like because everyone has their own soulmate. But that, hmm, it's interesting, you haven't qualified the status of my soulmate. Well, I haven't because I think you need to meet it to qualify the status of your soulmate. When you say status, what do you mean by status? Well, you introduced the other two as ones from the celestial kingdom. But you introduced this other person as just my soulmate. But they might be from the celestial kingdom. You don't know. Mm. You don't know where they would be, do you, at this point? No. They could be in the hills or they could be in the celestial kingdom and you wouldn't know either way probably at this point. Hmm. I don't think it really matters, does it? Where they are? Hmm. No, not in, in a way it doesn't. Uh, what matters more is that you meet the other half and that you start engaging the process of understanding each other hmm. and, and, and working through the issues that cause you to not understand each other. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So there's a potential that your soulmate's in a worse condition than yourself and you will need to help her. Or there's the other potential that your soulmate's in a much better condition than yourself and she'll probably need to help you. <laughs> I'd prefer that. <laughs> You'd prefer that. <laughs> yeah, I can understand why you might prefer that sometimes. But either way, love would dictate that you'd want to help each other, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. Now, if she was in the lower spheres, I'd yeah. love to help her. Yeah, of course. Mm. So that's one issue, the issue of soulmates. Now, the other issue that is the question you've asked me, and I know I've taken a long time to get around to the answer, but I needed to explain that there is a soul that exists, mm. and that soul is a combination of the two halves of the soul. In Mary and I's case, um, we have, in the spirit world, we, we lived on earth in... in 2,000 years ago, as you know, you've seen pictures of where we lived and so forth that were shown to you by your spirit friend who yes. came to you. And we've lived for 2,000 years in the spirit world, progressing in love and progressing together. Yes. In that process, we, we finished up coming together in what's called a soul union, where the two halves of the soul actually unify again into one complete whole. Oh. Does that make sense? So you, you have experienced this? Yes. 
Mm. Okay. Okay. So what's the colours you see coming out of me? <laughs> You're a rainbow of things. <laughs> but so, do you express yourself in different forms? Well, once you're, you're on earth versus... Yes, once you're in a complete soul like that, you have quite a lot of power, as you can imagine. You, you know that the power that you have now as a fourth sphere spirit is very, very different than the power you had when you were a first sphere spirit. Yes. Yes. So obviously, when you become a 36th sphere spirit, which is the place of the soul union, oh, wow. there must be quite a lot of power available to you at that point. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes, you mentioned the number 36. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought to myself, well, I have many more steps to make. Yes, but remember, all of them are enjoyable, yes. <laughs> as they have been up to now, right? So, so once you reach that, reach that state and you're in that com combined unified state, you have the option of connecting to some bodies that people conceive on Earth, okay. as well as materialising bodies anywhere in the spirit world. So that is the prerequisite? That's the prerequisite, yes. You can't do it before that state, but okay. you can do it after that state. So what myself and Mary have done is we, kept, we retained the spirit bodies we used to have, and in addition we've created more spirit bodies so that we can interact with more people at once in the spirit world. So this is how I can even be in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth spheres and all the other spheres, all at the same time talking about different things because there's all these different bodies that we've created to do such things. Does that make sense? Yes. But in addition to that, we decided to connect on Earth to a newly conceived bodies, two bodies obviously, each newly conceived baby on Earth, if you like, before it's born is conceived to by having two bodies and the soul envelops those bodies. Is that an automatic thing that occurred when you no, joined we, together? No, it's not the same as the first incarnation. In the first incarnation it was an automatic thing, but in the second incarnation that we had, we've, we've engaged, it wasn't an automatic thing. It was a choice that we made. So we chose the bodies. So do you also choose to be, have a body in every single dimensional space? We do sometimes, yes. There are times when we materialise and dematerialise bodies in every dimensional space. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. And we can do all of those things concurrently. Hmm. And, and we can do that body whether it's female or male. I can just imagine myself <laughs> with so many different me's yeah. learning. Now, as you know, when you've got to the fourth dimension of the spirit world, you can think much more clearly and quickly yes. than you used to be able to think when you were in the first dimension of the spirit world. What is your capacity? Well, you ask some of the spirits about that, about what the capacity is. Well, they say I don't understand, mm -hmm. which I cannot. But it's at a speed that So we can create, say, a hundred thousand bodies mm. that then interact with all different areas in the spirit world and they all interact at the speed at which the people we're interacting with interact. Mm. But we can assimilate all that information at the same time. Does that make sense? Mm. Now, if you can imagine whoever created us, must be able to do this to an infinite degree. Mm. Must be able to actually have interactions, infinite amount of interactions. And you know that your capacity has grown from the first dimension to the third and to the fourth. I mean, this blows my mind. Mm. So that means that you have the capacity to grow infinitely, but there's only one condition where you have the capacity to grow infinitely. And what would that be? That would be by receiving God's love, by actually entering a relationship with God. You know how you've been progressing up to now? You've been progressing by experimentation. Yeah, and, and others teaching me. And working through issues of love. Mm. So you've, you now are in a lot more loving state than you used to be. Yes. Yep. But you know um, that the people who have been teaching you, they've told you there was a limit to where they've been able to progress. And I wasn't concerned about that limit. Yeah. 
Because but, I just wanted to progress. Of course, but what is the limit? The limit would be that I'd be achieving the natural state. The of what perfect I'd... natural state, yes. 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 And well, that state's achieved in the sixth sphere of the spirit world. Hmm. Now, the question then becomes, how do we get from the sixth sphere of the spirit world to the 36th sphere of the spirit world? Well, it's an intriguing question. There has to be a progression beyond our natural state. Correct. Doesn't it? Yeah, it's logical. Yes, because our natural state is the sixth dimension. Then it means that if we're progressing the way you've been progressing up to now, then that would be the limitation of your progression, the sixth dimension. So I'd have to learn something exterior to myself. Correct. You're going to have to receive something exterior to yourself to, in order to have your soul to transform beyond the sixth dimension and into another dimension. Is that only available to those who reach the sixth state? No, it's available to anyone from any state. So you can be in the hells and begin this process. That's the beauty of this. God's offered this ability to progress using this other method to every single person. You refer to it as a person. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Because God is a being, and we can talk about the concept of God being a being later perhaps, but at this stage what I'm trying to do is introduce you to how you can progress beyond the natural state. So, so it makes logical sense, doesn't it, that we cannot progress beyond the natural state unless something outside of the natural state enters us. I totally agree with you. Yes. I can see that as a natural thing yes. occurring within myself. But yes. we all can. Yes. Hmm. And you've met people from the sixth dimension who have been teaching you. Yes. So you know that that is the limitation of the natural state. Yes. And you also have met this lovely woman in front of you. And she doesn't seem to be bound by that limitation. No. So the question then becomes, how did she progress beyond the natural state? Well, I haven't asked her. So hmm. what if you ask her now? Hmm. So what's she saying to you? She says she's an expression of the love that she's received from God. Correct. So she's had to receive love from God in order to progress beyond her natural state. That she so dearly desires. Correct. She had to demonstrate some kind of desire for it before it would enter her. I don't know, I'm touched by this. <laughs> well, this is your soul being touched now. Does that make sense? The possibility of this potential now is affecting you emotionally. And because it's affecting you emotionally, you begin to receive some of this love from God. But she changed at the same time. That's right. So you know, you know how she... <laughs> so why did she change at the same time? She showed me the expression of this as, as a real thing. Correct. But it's painful to me. Well, it's painful to you because there are certain emotions in you that you have not yet felt from your earth life. So the key for you now is allow yourself to be overwhelmed by those emotions, whatever they are. So one of the emotions is sadness, right? You don't understand why you're so sad. No, why would I be sad? Yeah, because you've never really had much sadness over the last hundred years. No, I'm ecstatic with joy. Yeah, so mm. where is this sadness coming from? Yeah. Well, it's coming from inside of your soul. It's been there all the time since you left the earth life, but you've never felt it. And why would that occur? Because you learnt to lock it up. You learnt to suppress it. You learnt to resist it and make it go away. Every time you got close to feeling it, you, you pushed it away again. So, as I grew in natural, in the love, yes. the things that naturally ignite within myself, Yes. You're saying that I've been suppressing. You've been suppressing, yes. You, the, your teachers up until this stage have taught you how to suppress certain emotions in your soul. Emotions that they believed were counterproductive to your progression. I thought I was alleviating, removing that from my being. No, not all of them, obviously, because as soon as you feel some of God's love, you start to feel sad. Mm -hmm. okay. And that sadness has obviously been there all the time. Okay. Does that make sense? 
So he begs the question. Mm -hmm. She has no sadness. Exactly. So when she feels God's love, she doesn't feel sad. So why is that? She's expressed all of it. Correct. She's experienced all of her sadness from her past, and so she does not need to experience any more. Mm. See, what happens when we're little, and, and particularly on Earth, is we get suppressed from feeling sadness. We get shut down. We get told that it's not right, right, through the environment. The environment shows us that it's not right to experience it. But so did, so did the spirit world, in a sense. Yes, particularly the path that you've been progressing on. It, they've taught you to do the same. So the same things as what you learnt on Earth, they taught you to do when you're in the spirit world. But the effect of it is that this sadness becomes locked up inside of you, inside of your soul. Your soul is like a big container full of emotions. Mm. And now the lady who's in front of you, and what's her name? Erika. Erika. Mm. So Erika. Erik. 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 Erika. Erika. Yeah. Erika has, has seen, has felt all of her sad emotions. So they are no longer inside of her soul. Yes. She says she's cried. Cried a lot. She's cried extremely. Yeah. But she doesn't cry anymore, except if it's for, for joy. other things. <laughs> mm. yeah. Like meeting me, she was crying. Yeah, because she was joyful about meeting you. Have you asked her why she was so happy to meet you? You just answered the third question. Yeah. I feel embarrassed. That's okay. You don't, you don't need to be embarrassed. Oh, like I've done lots of crying. <laughs> Everybody who's ever progressed this way has done lots of crying. You never feel, need to feel embarrassed. That really struck me hard. So what is it that struck you hard? The love she has for me. Yeah, she has a lot of love for you, doesn't she? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So it's the love she had for you that drew her to you. And when you express the desire to know where you came from, but whether there was a creator or not, this was the beginning of an opening in your soul that you hadn't opened it before. She's been helping me all along, she says. Correct. You've just not seen her. But I feel that from her. Yes. She has different feelings that she projects at you, but you've not seen her. No, I've never seen her. And you've been not seeing her because you've been blocked to seeing her. You didn't want to see her. There were certain feelings you didn't want to feel that you would have to feel in order to see her. How does that love do that? Well, that's the power of love, right? Particularly the power of God's love. It's interesting that the interaction, this is not the kind of interaction you've had with anyone else, is it? No, I've never felt anything like this. No. Ever. No. So all the other interactions have been, although they've been loving in nature, uh, you've not felt the power of this kind of love. I've never been... I've never been drawn to anyone like this. Mm. Mm. And not because I desired to. She's been drawing me. Yes. She's been drawing you through her feelings. But I'm, I am attracted to this. You're attracted to this or her? To her. <laughs> it's hard to be... Because there's two things you're attracted to, isn't there now? Can you feel that? There's, there's attracted to her, and there's also attracted to whatever this is going on. Yeah, I don't know what all this is going on. Mm. But she's reduced her... Her brightness. Yes, so, so that, I can be so this. I'm can. not so painful. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's not so confronting being with her. It's very confronting, mm. but I'm drawn to her. Because she's got a lot of emotion that you are shutting down inside of you, you see. And when you allow yourself to experience that emotion, you, you'll find it easier to be with her. 
But there's another part of it too, and that is that you'll need to experience some of God's love in order to be with her. Because right? she has some of God's love in her, as she's described. I, mean, I can feel her love enter into me. Mm -hmm. But that's not God's love. No, it's not. That's her love for you, which is powerful enough, isn't it? Mm. It overwhelms you. But if she could change... In a way, I feel drawn to that. Yes. So the question is, how did she progress beyond the natural love state, which was the sixth dimension, and into these other states? And she's told you, correctly so, that she's done that by receiving God's love and having a longing or a desire in her heart to receive God's love. And in the process, she's received God's love and as a result, she's progressed beyond the natural state. So if I want this love that's coming from her, that won't get there. That won't let me get there. Correct. Because the love that comes from her is her love for you. And it's, one, and it's great to want it if that's what you want. Yes. I, and if she wants to give it. I do want it. And you long for that love. That's fantastic that you want that. But that's not going to open you to get to her state, because to get to her state requires that you receive also love from God. And to do that requires another opening in your soul. So at the moment you are open to her. Does that make sense? If it hurt so much to meet her, what would it feel like to meet God? Mm. Can you see it's going to perhaps be overwhelming emotionally? And the key is to have the courage to embrace that process. Does that make sense? I'm very apprehensive. So now you have some fear. And you said to me before you didn't have any, but you do have some fear. So what are you afraid of? <clears throat> so this must be stored also in my soul. Correct. This fear has been in your soul since you passed from the earth. And... Uh, and it's been a long time since you've allowed yourself to experience it. I don't, just answering the question, I don't know what I'm fearing, but as a feeling. Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the feeling? When I talk about entering a relationship with God and receiving some of God's love, what's the feeling you have? I'm troubled that it exists. So why does it trouble you that it exists? What, 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 what issue do you have with it existing? All my, all my learnings has taught me the complete opposite. What have your learnings taught you? That we potentially are the emanation of something. Right, so we're potentially gods or a part of God. Is that what you've been taught? Mm, that we potentially are creators. Yes, You're, well, I agree we're potentially creators, but there's a difference between being creators and being the creator of everything. I always felt God was a silly notion for people. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why do you feel that? Because <clears> they <throat> use it to escape from the reality of themselves. They do, frequently. And I didn't want to be part of that. No, but that doesn't see. Can you see the mistake though that's been made there? How because, so? Well, there you've then you've basically taken on other people's beliefs about God. You follow me? Rather than understanding what God really is, it's a bit like taking on other people's belief about the spirit world without having the personal experience of the spirit world. I mean, I can see that mm -hmm. for the spirit world. Yeah. Until I had the experiences, I didn't know what, what I was missing out on. So why can't it be the same with God? Hmm. Very good point. So, so what you have been doing in your life, you know, in the spirit world, is every time you've met someone who believes in God, you've been saying to yourself, that's just their idea or that's just their concept. I don't have that concept and so I don't really agree with them, right? But I even feel angry about that for some reason. Mm -hmm. Why, to the point why is I've, that? And you see why? Because there is, the, every time you meet one of these people, a lot of these people are the kind of people who are in complete facade, aren't they? Well, they're more than a facade. Yeah, yeah. They hurt others through it. Yes, they're even harmful. I mean, 
I felt I was more truthful to these people by having a position. Yes, and you also felt to yourself to be more loving than they felt to you. Not on earth, I didn't feel. No, but in the spirit world, since In the spirit world, yes, I do. Yeah. But in hindsight, I, you know, I've had those experiences to get me to that point. True. But if you compare, there's two different types of people you've met who claim to be having a relationship with God. There's the first type of people who are in darkness still and who are still treating other people badly. Yes. And then there's this second group of people which are very different. They're very, very bright, very similar to the lady, to, to Erika in front of you, right? Very bright. And she claims to have had this relationship with God. And she, she can show me that. Correct. She's very, very different. She's not dark, is she? No. There's something different about I her, but she's still claiming she's got a relationship with God. And you can see from the colours coming out of her that she's telling the truth about that. Yeah. Mm. The, everything about her, the entire nature mm -hmm. of her, every expression, is loving. signifies that. Mm. Yeah, it's an expression of love, a mm. love that I don't know of. Mm. It's like meeting an angel, isn't it? Mm. I mean, I haven't met other people on earth that I've, how shall you say it, spent many times arguing with, mm -hmm. debating with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I find it amusing, though, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> they philosophise, mm -hmm. if, that, if that's a... They philosophise without knowing. Yes, and I've, I've spent many endeavours with these people. Mm -hmm. Attempting to demonstrate to them that they're wrong, that they're wrong, mm. you know, and they're, they're doing men much harm. Yeah, they are. They are. Whenever we philosophize without knowing, we are doing harm. And I find them more difficult and more hurtful than the other people who are simply living their lives, living their lives who are yes, because, without love. Because these philosophers are teaching other people. Yes. And there's so many of them. Yes. Yeah. So. Create a position where, uh, a determination, mm -hmm. shall I call it, mm -hmm. where I wanted to prove them wrong. Yes. And that's where all my endeavours has... Have gone into. You have spent gone a into, lot of time trying to reason with them. And, and every time they have another point, I'll go and investigate that and come back to them to demonstrate that. And show them that it was wrong. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And... I've reached a point where it's just pointless. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of concepts in the spirit world, isn't there? A lot of ideas, and many of them are wrong. <laughs> there's many millions of them are wrong. And you'd have to be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, looking at all these millions of different concepts that end up being wrong. How can you ignore something that is so obvious? And I know you don't have the experiences, but... I uh, don't have the experiences. You have the experiences. <laughs> These people don't have the experiences mm -hmm. to realise what I've felt and learnt Correct. to accept. And, Correct. And they don't want to make a decision. To have the experience. To have the experience. Correct. So how are they ever going to learn? So what drives them? And I've always been asking. Fear. Fear. Mm. How's that? The emotion of fear. See, whenever we're resistive to a new experience, we are really afraid. And particularly if that new experience is going to give us more truth and get us to be in a position of better a condition of love, then it obviously means we must be afraid. Otherwise, we'd never resist the experience. You seem to learn a lot of stuff. Why have I been drawn to these people? To the people who you're trying to help? Yes. The main reason is because you can see that it's untrue. You can see that they've been living in lies and you can see the damage it does. And that upsets you. But I never, I never associated myself with being upset. I've just been upset. Yes. But if you think about it, you have been upset about the lies and about the fact that they've been misrepresenting the truth and telling lies to other people on earth and that it's caused damage. Yes, I, I have. And if you think about your life on earth, you did feel that false teachers caused you damage. Many. Yeah. And this is one reason why you've been so focused on it. It's because you've yet to release the, uh, the emotion you have of how much grief you have associated with the fact that other people have taught you things that were wrong. But on the subject of God, mm -hmm. I feel angry about that. 
Well, a lot of times they involved God in teaching you things that were wrong. Especially religion. Especially religion. Yes. And especially the Spanish religion, right? When it came to And that's to where Mexico. I went. I went to Spain to learn this stuff. Mm -hmm. they've, they've done many great things. They occupied our country. They did. Based on a lot of their so-called religious beliefs. Yes, but I wouldn't call them great things because it involved conquering and yes. killing. And I can see that. Though. And that was obviously out of harmony with love. So I went to the source to learn about that. Mm -hmm. And they had no true expression of God. No. They only had power as their expression, dominating people through fear. And I hated people who did those things in yes. the name of God. Yes, they upset you. And then you've come to blame God for them. But God's not like that. But I didn't know that. I always associated that that's, if they're an expression of God, yeah. which they're not, then that's not right. I agree, it's definitely not right, but they're definitely not an expression of God. In fact, if anything, they're blasphemous towards God, Im implying that God has this character, is blaspheming God, because God's character is only good. God's character is only loving, as you will experience if we try an experiment. What experiment do you have in mind? <laughs> Well, there's two experiments I have in mind. There's one experiment I, I would suggest with the lady who's come to you. And there's one experiment that I'd suggest that you have with God. Okay. All right. And I'd suggest you try the one with God first. I'm very apprehensive. Yeah. Because of the fear associated. Just let yourself feel your fear. Because remember, this is fear from your childhood experience or your experience of life on earth. Why, why does it make me shake so much? Because the Spanish, particularly during the 18th and 17th centuries, were very angry in a way they expressed any belief in God. And they became violent and oppressive. Is there a potential I could die doing this? No, no. But there is the fear that you have that you need to let yourself feel. You feel afraid that you're going to connect to their angry God but their angry God doesn't exist. There's no such being. Mm -hmm. I've just been comforted by that ego. Yeah. I'm willing to experiment. If I she... can just help you a little with your reasoning, if Elika has got to where she's currently got by receiving God's love, and that place is above where you can go if you're perfected in natural love, then it makes sense logically that God's love must be greater than what you would experience if you had natural love. So that suggests that the source of that love, God, must be more loving than anything you've ever experienced. But I don't feel that at this point. You don't because you're closed to that. And the reason why you're close to it is because of the fears associated with your earth life, associated with the Catholic religious faith. See, they taught a punishing God. They and, did. And that God does not exist. You've not met that God, have you? No. <laughs> so that God does not exist. Not in my... Not, not in, in your mind. experience in the no. spirit world, have you? You've only met it in the minds and hearts of men, haven't you? If you think about it. It's mm. only a concept of philosophers, uh, of religious philosophers. But not a, not a true expression of that, not anything that Eric has. Correct, does. correct. So the theologians who explained their concept of God to you, a punishing God who destroys the wicked, many of them are in very, very dark states. Mm. And many of them have never met this God either met them exactly you've met those people but i've never met god and they i have much sadness for them yes because they have a terrible condition <clears throat> and and they've come to realize that they themselves have no idea about god that's or, right or anything that they've actually that they believe they believed or taught mm. or done in the name of of god mm. so yeah. i dismiss the concept of god yes and this is where the error was made just because a person on earth or persons in the hells of the spirit world teach you one concept of God, 
it doesn't mean that there, that God does not exist if that if the, that concept of God doesn't exist. I see. I've associated their experience, correct, and attributed that as the truth. That's right. That's what you've done. Where and that's the mistake. The because it's p potentially able to be a different concept of God, isn't there? Mm. That has nothing to do with their concept of God. In other words, their concept of God is a lie, and there might be a different concept of God that is actually true. I find it so fascinating in the spirit world how there's always extreme polarities. There are. There's extremists on every side, isn't there? Yes, it's either one or the other. Yes. And, and my belief is the same. Yes. And, and yet, if you think about it from a logical perspective, you can see that, firstly, if Erika has received some of God's love and that's transformed her, that means that God must be more loving than perfected natural love. You can also see that her concept of God is completely different to the concept of God that the people in the hells had. Why? Why would people on earth develop a concept about God if they haven't experienced that which they teach? The main reason why is because they have lived with parents who were violent and punishing. And that made them openly disposed to the concept of God that is also open and openly punishing. But there's always an origin of everything. Yes, so, the emotions are the origin of everything is what I'm suggesting. Right. When so, I have an emotion inside of me that my parents told me they loved me and yet they violently harmed me, and then somebody introduces the concept of God to me, I will assume that if that person says God is loving, that that means that God may potentially violently harm me. Because that's what happened when I was a child with my parents. You also know there is feelings, there's thoughts I have mm -hmm. about you mm -hmm. and the concept of God mm -hmm. that troubles me. What, what's those troubles? Your name yeah. was used as an expression of God, that you are himself. Yes, and it's quite obvious that, that I'm not God, the, right? Well, now I, I know that, yeah. and that you, you simply have an expression of that. But I was challenged by Eric, Erika telling me this. Mm -hmm. You will meet the person who is not God, mm -hmm. but who is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you're such a lovely fellow that I <laughs> can see that you're not God. Exactly. I'm just a normal person, right? You're just a normal person. Mm. But people on earth don't know that. No, no. Many of them believe that Jesus is God, right? And when I was on earth, many things were done. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Which was I just believe... as bad as doing them in the name of God. Yes. I, 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 it's anonymous. Yes. As the same thing. Yes. I'm sorry to say that. Yeah. And unfortunately, many things were done in my name, which are completely opposite of what I would want done. But did you not introduce the concept of God to mankind? I did, but unfortunately, most of mankind distorted that concept. Is it because they never had the experience of the feelings? No, it's mostly, well, it's because they never had the experience of the feelings coming from God, yes. But they also had this predisposition, which is about their parents. Parents who told them that they loved them while at the same time harming them. Okay, very similar to myself. Same as yourself. And that makes a person open or disposed to believing in a violent God, a punishing God, who justifies violence. Mm -hmm. And of course God does not justify violence. That's good to know. Hmm. So partly the fear that you experience when I talk about God is actually this earth-based fear that you've not released yet. You've not allowed yourself to go through the experience of it. Does that make sense? Yes, I have not contemplated these things mm. or felt any of this mm. as you speak. And for that reason, you've been quite blocked to God, emotionally blocked to God. You, d you haven't wanted to have a relationship with God because you believed God was a nasty being if God existed at all. Correct. Mm. Mm. And I'm suggesting to you, God does exist, but God is not the nasty being you were taught. 
So I'm conflicted with, okay, I'm willing to accept the concept, mm -hmm. but I don't feel that. <laughs> exactly, because you're going to have to let go of some feelings in order to accept that. Does that make sense? Yes. Every one of your belief systems is accompanied by a feeling, and this is why you have it. But this brings me to the experiment. Hmm. You know how with Erika, you've pro you, you, you feel a feeling that you want her love, don't you? Can you feel that feeling? Yes, I do. Because it's so lovely to experience it, isn't it? But she has such a pure love for you, doesn't she? You know, it's very uplifting. Mm. And it makes you feel positive and it makes you feel like you can conquer the world, as the saying goes. I know that's not probably the right saying, but it no, makes not you... not in that context. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it makes you feel buoyant and happy. It makes me feel... It does truly make me feel alive. Yeah. It gives yeah. me... Not hope in the sense of hope. Inspires. Mm. Mm. It makes you feel like there are great possibilities, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Yeah. Well, if that's what Erika's love is, can you imagine what God's love might be? I can see how it'd be very overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> and probably more of the feelings associated with that than you even receive from Erika, right? So it would be inspiring. It'd give all the meaning to life. Yes. Yeah. So what I would suggest is you have an experiment. This is the experiment that I was going to suggest to you, the first experiment. And that was that that longing that you feel for Erika to love you, have the same longing towards God to love you. So if there is a God that's loving, and if that God exists, would that God give you that same kind of love? Can I ask, how do the others do it? Because not everyone here has Erika. Well, they have to connect to some kind of feeling of longing inside of them for God to have, to love them. Does that make sense? Yes. So that means that they have to allow whatever feelings they have about God that are false. And remember, all of the feelings associated with God being punishing or violent or brutal, they are all false beliefs. So they are all beliefs that somebody else taught them, but they're not the truth about God. Does that make sense? Mm. So we need to put them aside for a moment and we need to allow ourselves to feel whatever we feel and then just ask God if God, is God, if God exists and God has love for you individually, God has love for me, can I feel some of that love? And let yourself feel that longing as a feeling. And allow whatever emotions come up to come up. This is truly amazing, but it's, it causes so much things in within me. Turmoil, isn't it? Extreme right. turmoil. Yeah. And I stop, I, it shuts me down. You, you stop it from happening. Does that make sense? And that's because you're getting overwhelmed and you need to allow yourself to be overwhelmed. It's okay to be overwhelmed. Maybe once we've finished this conversation, if you just let yourself be overwhelmed by it. Does that make sense? The second experiment, so I'll leave that experiment with you because that's a private experiment. You really need to do that experiment for yourself. Does that make sense? Yes. And the second experiment is with Erika. Mm -hmm. She's just taken a moment. Mm -hmm. She's crying. Mm -hmm. Why is she crying? Makes me cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, cry. She's cr she's crying because she can see God's love into me and yeah. how beautiful it is. Yeah, isn't it wonderful? She's so joy. Yeah, she's so happy about that. Yeah. Not just myself, but for everyone. For others. Yeah. Yeah. She's concerned about others. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the direct result of her actions 
as well. So she's, she's demonstrating to me how God's love enters. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. And the key is to just let yourself feel whatever you feel as it does. Sometimes there'll be different feelings. There'll be sometimes anger, sometimes sadness, sometimes shame, sometimes guilt, sometimes fear. Oh, I've got so much shaking. Mm, that's fear. You see, you've got to just let yourself feel what you feel. Does that make sense? Yes. And then it can continue to flow into you. And you'll get to a point in your future where it can flow into you all the time. And you won't feel sad or afraid or... Mm. But there's a second experiment. <coughs> These are nice experiments. <laughs> Let me just have a cough. I'll just. <coughs> the second experiment is with Erica. Or let's say. Let's say it differently to that. It's towards the other half of you. Mm. If your soulmate exists, and I'm saying to you that your soulmate does exist, if your soulmate exists, then it would make sense that you could have the same kind of longing for her as you just had for God, directed towards her, and you probably will receive something in return from her. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm, I like this one. It's not so easy to do. No. Why is that? Why is that? Can you think about what happened in your childhood on earth and in your adult life on earth with women? Women were not very nice. No. What was your experience of women? I was not a man in my mum's eyes. Why is that? I was too gentle. Yeah. I wasn't... I wanted to learn. Yeah. You weren't tough and strong like she wanted a man to be. No. I couldn't protect anyone. Yeah. She was disappointed. She wanted a protector, a provider, mm. but not a sensitive person. It was difficult times. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Can you see how that might provide an emotional blockage towards women inside of you? Yes, I just thought they were different. Well, you thought they were callous. Yes, very cold. Yeah. But is, is the lady Erica callous and no. cold? She's far from that. Yeah. So can you see you're probably going to have to feel some emotions about women being callous and cold? Hmm. So more things that I have. Mm -hmm. That you didn't know were there. <coughs> This is truly remarkable. Mm. So I, I need to find these feelings that are within me. Mm. Within, as you say, my soul. Within your soul. Within you. You are your soul, so they mm. are within you, within your heart, within the feelings of you, emotions. I've never explored myself in this way. No. But God's going to encourage you to explore yourself in this way. God will. Yeah. Because the only way to connect to God like Erica has is to explore yourself in this way. So how, does, how did God teach Erica to become? Well, she had to use her will and she had to have faith that if she used her will to receive God's love and allowed herself to feel any emotion that came up as a result, that she would continue to receive God's love. She definitely has faith. Hmm. She now has more than faith, doesn't she? She has total conviction about God, right? Yes. But at the beginning it wasn't like that for her. No. 
She had a lot of beliefs about God too that she had to work through. She did. She did. Because she was taught similar things to yourself. Hmm. But she had a different feeling towards God, nonetheless. She had a feeling of wanting love from God. Which Always. You, which you've not had. You've had more of a feeling of anger towards God. Hmm. Hmm. So she had a concept inside of her that maybe God wasn't quite the same God that she was told God was. She said she, was a, she felt something hmm. when she was very young. Hmm. And she clinged to that no matter what. Hmm. She trusted that experience. Even though she was treated hardly, harshly. By religious people? Yes, mm. especially men. Mm. But she still had a concept that God was different to that. Mm. Mm. And she had a concept of men that's different to how she feels. To how she feels now? Yes. Because she had a concept of men that men were just terrible, didn't she? <clears throat> she hated men, mm. she says. Mm. And God's love helped to change all that. But she had to be willing to go through the experience of those feelings. Okay. Mm. So I need to learn to, to do that as well. Mm. So when you longed for the other half of yourself, where did you get that from? What, did you notice the colour coming into you? It was a demand. So it wasn't, wasn't a it longing... Wasn't it wasn't like what comes from her. This. So what colour comes out of her? Really rich rosette type of mm -hmm. um, colour. Mm. And there's warmth with it. And, mm. and what colour comes out of you when you long for... Brown. Brown, yes. Yeah, so that can't be the same thing, right? No, it wasn't. <laughs> and she didn't respond to that. No, of course not. Yeah. Whoever is your soulmate is not going to respond to that, right? No. For your soulmate to respond, there's going to be, have to be a feeling the same kind of rosette colour coming out of you. Does that make sense? But I can't create that. Well, you can create it, but only by letting go of all the demands and all the expectations and all of the concepts about women that you have. There's also... Mm. Yes, I understand. Remember, your soul is like a container of all of these emotions, and unless you let go of some of these emotions, that's what's going to come out of you. So there are many feelings I have. To work your way through. Mm. 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 So if you had a pure feeling for your soulmate that isn't based around the fact that you believe her to be cruel and callous and all of those kind of things, but rather felt that she was going to be loving and kind, and you imagined that as your soulmate, and you desired to give her love rather than just receive love from her, mm. what colour comes out of you then? A few, a few little colours come out. Mm -hmm. mm. And where do they go? Very light bluish, orange. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Some changes in the colours, right? Yeah. And where do they go? Towards where? They go towards her heart. Yeah. Towards Erica. Yeah, it does. Mm. I didn't know it would go straight to her. Mm. Why does it go to her and not to other women? Well, I'm asking the same question. <laughs> so she has the potential of being my soulmate. Mm. And how does it saying that feel to you? It says. Why does it sadden you? I can't express this much love for her either. Yeah. yeah. She does for me. Yeah. So again, just let yourself be overwhelmed by the feeling. <laughs> so at the beginning of our conversation, you asked me why people wanted to stay in the third sphere rather than go to the fourth. Do you remember that question? I do indeed. And that's because in the third sphere is where you learn a lot about God and a lot about the soul, about the emotions. Does that make sense? But in the fourth sphere, you don't learn that much about the emotions in comparison to the third sphere. 
but how did I skip that? Well, because you were progressing intellectually and you were forcing yourself to love. And what they're trying to do is to release the reasons why they don't love rather than forcing themselves to love. And they've also focused on receiving God's love. And you didn't want to do that. No. And they're the two reasons why they stayed in the third. Mm. I feel myself drawn to go back <laughs> to speak to them. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I feel you've got a lot of feelings to go through in here, huh? I have been crying as I'm talking to you. Yes. It's, really, it's very hard to concentrate. It's very hard to concentrate. It's better off to feel the feelings rather than having to concentrate talking to me. You fascinate me with everything you say. Mm. But as you say, there's more things, more feelings keep coming up. Yeah. So what, what I'm going to suggest is that you allow yourself to have private time now to feel these feelings. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yes. To go through these feelings. And hopefully I've answered enough of your questions to encourage you to keep examining things on the same path. Most of my friends have gone. Yeah, why have they gone? They're all crying. They're gone. They're yeah, doing their that's own right. Thing. They're doing their own thing. Mm. That's wonderful, isn't it? They've, all these other people appeared. Yes. And those are all people who can help each one of you yes. to keep progressing on this path. Mm. This path, remember, goes beyond the path of natural love. Beyond what I could potentially be. Beyond what be. you could have been. Mm. And, and now you can potentially be much, much greater as a result. Mm. Mm. Those two loves are so different to the love I've ever felt. Exactly. They yeah. are. Thank you for introducing this to me. Yeah, my pleasure. Mm. One's the love of God, which is the most important love you can ever experience. And the next one is the love of your soulmate, which is the next most important love you can ever experience. With all my heart, mm. whatever colour and feeling comes out of me. <laughs> That's right. And if the feeling is dark or it's grey or black or brown or, you know, those kind of colours, then you know that it's tainted with a feeling of some kind that's not the same as her pure feeling. Yeah. And then you can ask her, what, what's that feeling? And she can say, oh, that's demand, or that's expectation, or that's anger, or that's fear, or... And she can tell you what it's about. Mm -hmm. So then you have the opportunity to work your way through that emotionally. Mm. Mm -hmm. I can do this. Mm. You've warmed my heart. Mm. Thank you. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. It's been lovely to speak with you. I know you don't feel any type of love from me the way that you express it to me <laughs> but so, in, in time you will i feel so yeah yeah so thank you once your heart comes open there's a nice little verse in the bible that says your heart turns from a heart of stone into a heart of flesh so god's love makes your heart change it softens and softens and you've already been quite a soft person like a gentle person so I think you're going to find it quite easy to yeah. progress along this path once you let go of your concepts about God that have been false. Mm. So it's not a weakness. No. Mm. Thank you. Mm. And we all thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And Erika said thank you as well. It's my pleasure. I know how significant it's been for her. Yes. She's, she's been waiting for you for a, a long time. She'll spend a bit of time away from me. Yeah. How many years has she been waiting for you? all the time that I've been in the spirit world. Yeah, 200 years. Yeah. Even though she passed early, later. Yeah. Yeah. But it's because she had that feeling for God that helped her through everything. Mm. That's what caused her to be more developed in love than you. Mm. And sure, so she wasn't reliant on developing her own love. She, she received love from God rather than trying to develop her own love. And that caused the change in her. So much knowledge mm. that everyone needs to receive. Yeah, that's right. And that's one reason why Mary and I are back on Earth again. What a gift. Thank you. Mm. I endeavour to get to know you through Erica. Yeah. Erica. Thanks. Thank I'd love you. to know you too. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs>